The one thing I've always wondered is if when they introduced Lady Yagiri, if they had finalized what her people look like or not, if that's why they had her covered up. I don't know. I've always wondered that. I mean, obviously they had some idea because she's got the tail and the <clears throat> horn thing here, but yep. And if not all of her people, they maybe didn't know what they wanted her to look like yet. If I may, madam, as I said earlier, we have been at sea for some several moons, and our supplies are all but spent. I have not the heart to repeat the tales of our tribulations, nor would it please you to listen to them, I think. Suffice it to say, however, sacrifices have been made. Though it shames me to beg for more when you have already offered so much, desperation compels me. Good madam, if you or your associates could spare any provisions, anything at all, it would go a long way to lessen the suffering of my people. Hmm. Oh, maybe Mamodi knows something. Hi, Mamodi, it's been a long time. Hells, why didn't you say so sooner, Sophie? Of course I'll help. You couldn't have picked a better day to tell the truth. A wealthy merchant and his entourage were due to have a banquet here on the morrow, see? But just sent word they can't come, meaning I've got a boatload of foodstuffs and no one to feed. Best of all, they paid for the lot in advance. Ha ha! Go and call on Friedera and Catherine at the Sapphire Avenue Exchange. Tell them I said to ship the little prince's order to the Wakened Sands. Oh, and if they argue, just show them those letters. That should set them straight. Well, okay. She's in the business of feeding refugees now. I ain't normally one to question Mistress Mo Momodi's judgment, but that doesn't seem wise to me. Shut up and take this letter. I'll not speak for the children, but if you ask me, any man but can't earn a crust deserves to go hungry. My, that's a rather odd request. Mayhaps you misheard her instructions? No, you read them for yourself. You know, you shouldn't encourage them like this. They'll start to expect it. You mark my words. People here are so grouse. Old Da is like not gonna hand out food, man. This is the last place you wanna go if you're in trouble. They didn't give you any trouble, did they? Good. Now go and tell Lady Yagiri it's all in hand. I... I dared not hope for such magnanimity, much less expected. Mistress Mamodi is generous indeed. I shall be sure to thank her most humbly. Lady Yagiri, I briefed the Flame General on your situation. I think you will be pleased with his reply. We have been granted an audience? Before the Sultana and the Syndicate both. We should return to the Royal Promenade at once. You have done much for us, Master Alpino. I swear we shall return the favor. Not is owed, Lady Yagiri, for not has been given. This small favor you fairly won with your words, and it is with words that you must win the favor of the Syndicate. Then I shall choose them with care. You will be accompanying us, yes? Good. Your presence may serve to remind the Syndicate of the true meaning of philanthropy, and that nothing so unpalatable will be required of them, assuming the Domans are willing to earn their keep. 
Come, the flame general awaits us on the royal promenade. Are you Giri of Dermar? I'm honored to meet you at last, Your Grace. To mark this auspicious occasion, I should like to present to you the finest treasures our humble nation has to offer. Alas, the circumstances which have brought me here today have divested me of both time and dignity. I come before you as a pauper in direst need of aid, to request that you grant my people asylum. I, Nanamo, 17th in the line of U, welcome you to our city. Be at ease, Lady Yugiri. Although I myself have heard the tale of your misfortune, I would ask that you recount it once more for the benefit of the others here present. As you wish, Your Grace. For many years, my nation, Doma, suffered under the yoke of imperial rule, and my people yearned to be free. Thus, when a war of succession broke out in Garlemald, we sought to take advantage of the chaos and reclaim our liberty. Alas, our enemy proved less preoccupied than we had hoped, and our rebellion was put down in the most brutal fashion. Those who survived, how many do they number? More than 200 souls huddle within the cramped confines of our own galleon's hold. Yet this figure accounts for but one of a number of ships which escaped the Purge. It is my hope that you will allow us all to dwell within your walls. Should that prove unfeasible, however, I humbly ask that you accept as many of my people as your resources allow. Pray understand we do not beg a boon, but propose instead an arrangement. We would serve as soldiers or tradesmen until our debt is repaid. What are the Syndicate's opinions on this matter? I, for one, think it's a marvelous idea. Lady Yugiri and her people strike me as an industrious lot, and there are parts of the city which have yet to be fully restored. If they are willing to work, I see no reason not to let them. The head of the Mirage Trust is not known for his generosity. He sees profit in this. I agree. That said, these are foreign refugees. To admit them would require a formal resolution. Shall we call a vote? The law is the law. Lord Lolorito? Tell me, are you blind or willfully ignorant? Even now, our streets are choked with the displaced victims of the Calamity and Alamegan refugees. They live hand to mouth, subsisting on aid provided by the immortal flames, the cost of which grows ever higher. The wealth of Ulda is not without limits, my friends. And need I remind you that these refugees are prone to violence and criminal activity? You have all read the reports, I think. Without homes or employment, it is only a matter of time before men grow desperate and take that which they imagine has been unjustly denied them. Yet, knowing this, you would have us swell their ranks. Mayhap you think the brass blades and the flames are not hard-pressed enough? Some say the chairman of the East Aldenard Trading Company passes Gil thrice daily. This may explain how he came to be the wealthiest man in Uldar. Or it may simply be that he's ruthless beyond reckoning. Surely the Sultanate can support the few hundred domains Lady Yugiri represents. That our resources have been taxed, I do not deny. But we are hardly in danger of financial collapse. 
I move that an exception be made. An exception, Your Grace? I am suddenly reminded of a similar debate some years ago regarding a number of Alamegan refugees, if memory serves. What were your words that day? <sighs> ah, yes. The law is the law. And so our visitors remained in little Alamigo. Mayhap our wise and benevolent Sultana would be so good as to enlighten us as to which other of our laws should not be upheld. Mind your tongue, Lolorito. My lord. I share your concern for the welfare of our great nation, but we must endeavor to take a longer view. You know as well as I that people can be a resource still more precious than Gil. Precious or not, they were never yet so reliable. And unlike those who frequent your establishment, I have no desire to gamble with my future. Uldar's greatest asset is, and has ever been, her material wealth. We risk this at our peril. One need only look to Telegi Adelegi's example for evidence of the danger in allowing sentiment to dictate policy. How far the vaunted Mirage have fallen, both in repute and profitability, since he began employing refugees. How I choose to conduct my affairs is not your concern, my lord. A proposal has been tabled. Given its urgency, I move we forego further debate and call a vote. To accept the Doman refugees or not. Those in favor, I bid you remain. Those opposed, I bid you leave. That it were within my power to welcome you and your people, Lady Yugiri. As you have observed, however, my authority in such matters is regrettably limited. Without the consent of the Syndicate, I cannot act. I understand, Your Grace. And I appreciate all that you have done on our behalf. The nerve of the man! If that bastard had not forsaken the eastern trade route, little Alamigo would now be thriving. Oh, that you should have traveled so far under such dire circumstances, only to be refused in this manner is utterly unconscionable. Pray, accept my sincerest apologies. Now that the Empire no longer poses an immediate threat, they see little reason to maintain the pretense of unity. The Monitorists have grown especially defiant of late. Lord Lolorito most of all. But this is neither the time nor place for that discussion. As you observed, Lolorito is not afraid to speak his mind, nor is he like to change it. Oft have I wondered how a man so skilled at weighing the worth of things should be so incapable of seeing the value in people. Bah, I will waste no more words on him. Not when the Domans are yet in need of aid. Everyone, follow me to the Hall of Flames.
Syndicate has spoken, and I see no point in moving that the matter be reconsidered. The monitorists have made their position clear. Agreed, Ulda is not an option. Nor are Limza, Luminza, or Gridania, I judge, given the state of their internal affairs. Which leaves our Doman friends confined to a ship. Gods, the thought of them huddled in an airless hold with no hope of better treatment. Would that I had more time to find an alternative. A place not bound by the concerns of the great nations. Minfilia, that is precisely what I wish to discuss. I understand the Syndicate's decision. I do. We all wish to preserve, or preserve that which is ours, especially when we believe it to be under siege. But I cannot meekly accept this judgment, not while my people suffer. Would it be out of the question for the Sultanate to accept us for a limited time? A week, mayhap, or even just a few days? Excellent. I shall keep you informed. Lady Aguirre, I have a proposal, if you would hear it. Out with it, Master Alpino. The headquarters of my order, the Scions of the Seventh Dawn, stands in a place called Revenant's Toll, an outpost in Mordona. Like most outposts, it is frequented by mercenaries and other men of action and lacks the comforts of more well-established settlements. However, the leaders of Revenant's Toll have been doing their utmost to change that. To that end, they have need of able-bodied individuals willing to work as frontier hands. Hard labor, lest you doubt. With not safe food and shelter by way of reward. Terms not unlike those which you yourself proposed, Lady Yigiri. Though I will not hear a word said against our beloved Wadah, Revenant's Toll would offer certain advantages, the absence of unhelpful bureaucracy being the most obvious. If they can accommodate us all, we shall gladly accept them. Master Alphano, once again I find myself in your debt. Pray, do not thank me, my lady. The life your people go to is one of hard labor and few comforts, as I told you. And before that, there remains the matter of how they may safely be borne to Revenant's Toll, which will be no small feat considering the distance and their present condition. Mayhap the Oldon Adventurers Guild can be of assistance? Look for me there again, Sophie. Lady Yagiri, if you and your people would accompany me, we may discuss what aid the Immortal Flames can provide. We are concerned that the Doman refugees may find the journey to Revenant's Toll too much to bear. Too long have they been sequestered aboard their ship, with insufficient supplies and scarce room to breathe, let alone stretch their limbs. With that in mind, Mistress, M Mris uh, Mistress Mamodi has kindly offered to accommodate the Domans until such time as they are ready to set out for Mordona. Those healthy enough to travel will embark as soon as transportation has been secured, while those too weak to leave at once will be permitted to stay until they regain their strength. What news? Transportation remains our greatest obstacle, General. Is there aught the immortal flames can do? I fear that exceeds our mandate. Were it a smaller number, mayhap it would go unnoticed. But the Syndicate will not bear the cost of, ex of escorting more than 200 domains to, the to Mordona. When government fails to act, the responsibility falls to us private citizens. I will engage the services of the 77 caravans on the Doman's behalf. Very well. We should begin contract negotiations at once. Your generosity is most welcome, my lord. 
After all that has befallen these good people, it is the least I can do. Come what may, you shall ever have a friend in Ulda, Lady Yugiri. And you in Revenant's Toll, my lord. Well, it sounds like we all have work to do. Lady Yugiri, let's put our heads together and settle the details of our arrangement, shall we? I would entrust the task of escorting our Doman friends to you, after you have rested your own road-weary legs, of course. What say you? I say, nod. As we speak, the Domans prepare for departure at Vesper Bay. Where from, they will be transported by carriage to Ulda. That said, this has all been decided rather suddenly, and it would not surprise me if the refugees require some assistance in coordinating their preparations. Sophie, I would have you return to Vesper Bay and facilitate the process through tasks great and small. In short, whatever must needs be done, do it. Speak with a man named Hosen. When you arrive, as Lady Yagiri tells it, he has been designated the leader of the first group. Alright, well, I can do that. 